Hello, I'm doing this video uh, in lieu of a larger sermon video because uh, we had our our parish meeting down at Lakeview Lodge in Devil's Lake. It was an awesome time, but unfortunately it was very windy, and so the, uh, the video of the sermon that was taken at that time uh, was, well, mostly wind. I uh, couldn't hear anything uh, with regards to what I was saying uh, having to do with the scriptures. So, uh, just briefly, I want to share really the last uh, set of principles that our Lord Jesus brings to light in Luke 6, uh, verses uh, 41 and 42. In Luke 6, 41 and 42, our Lord Jesus says the following. He says, Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye without concern for the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when you don't notice the log in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And as I, as I was saying, we've been uh, dealing with principles of Christian life and witness that we find in the Gospel of Luke in the 6th chapter, verses 35 through 42. And this last saying of our Lord uh, tells us something very important. But first of all, I want to say what it doesn't mean. Uh, this saying from our Lord does not mean that we should not judge, and that we should not call sin, sin. It doesn't mean that some sins are smaller than others. It doesn't mean any of that. The word that really uh, opens up what our Lord means with these, these sayings is this. He uses the word hypocrite. A hypocrite in the Greek is an actor. Someone who says the right thing but doesn't live that way because he or she is an actor. They're not expected to live like the character they're playing. They're simply playing a character and when they're done from the stage they can live any way they want. And unfortunately, that's true of many Christians. Many Christians and many churches, well, we say the right thing, we go to church, we give, we do all the religious things that we think we're supposed to do. We go to church on Sunday, we say our confession, we pray our prayers, and then we go out into the world and we live just like the rest of the world. We're sexually immoral, we're greedy, we're drunkards, uh, we're gossips. We do all the things that Jesus hates. And yet we have the, the gall to look at someone else in the world and say, you need to change. The problem with that is that people outside the church see the hypocrisy. They see that we're behaving exactly the same way. And when we're behaving like the world, we're not showing people light. We're showing them darkness. We're not revealing Jesus. We're revealing hell. And we're leading people into hell when we're living like the world and not like the Lord. And so what our Lord Jesus is saying to the church is this. It's perfectly right to call people to account and to invite them to change. But if we're going to invite other people to change, well then the change has to start here with us. We are the ones who have to get our lives in order with God. We are the ones who need to come before the Lord and ask forgiveness. See, what good is it to call someone to account for sexual immorality when we're doing it ourselves? What good is it if we tell someone not to gossip and they see us doing it. If there's going to be change in the world and there's going to be change in our families and there's going to be change in our communities, that change has to start with us. We are the ones who need to repent first. We are the ones as the body of Christ who need to come to the Lord and get set free first. And the neat thing is, is that when we are set free, when we turn to the Lord and give our lives over to Him so that His Spirit and His blood cover us and change us, well, then we will have something to share with others. And we'll be able to share with those who are our neighbors how to get free. Because, you see, many of our people uh, in our neighborhoods, in our families, they know that something's wrong inside. They know innately that what they're doing is wrong and harmful and evil, but they can't get free. It's all they know. They want to get free, but they don't know how. We are the ones, as the church, 
who are called to show the way to get free. And the only way we can show the way to get free is having been there ourselves and met the one who is the great physician, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died for our sins, was raised for us, for our justification, who is sending into heaven and gives his grace and the Holy Spirit to make us new. So hear what our Lord is saying. He is saying to us that we are not to live religiously as actors, saying the right thing, but not living according to his word. We are to walk the walk and talk the talk. And as we meet the Lord and know his power to save, we are to lead others into that salvation and show them the compassion that the Lord has for them. Because, yes, the Lord hates sin, but he always loves the sinner. He wants the sinner to come home and to avoid hell and enter into the kingdom. And as we have been saved from the wrath of God and from hell by the blood of Jesus, we are called by the Holy Spirit to lead others into what we ourselves have received. So before we deal with someone else's sin, let's come to the Lord and check ourselves. Where do we need to change? And then call on the name of the Lord. Repent of your sin. Receive forgiveness and receive the power of the Holy Spirit to live new. And then you will have something to share with someone else and lead them out of darkness and into the light. Many of the problems we have in the world right now come from the failure of the church to be the church. Too often the church has been like the world. We see it too often as churches embrace homosexuality, embrace worldly thinking, embrace worldly behaviors, embrace all kinds of evil and idolatry like witchcraft and embrace mother goddess worship and the like. Embrace drinking and drunkenness and debauchery. That's not leading people to Christ. That's leading them to hell. That's pretending that this is holiness when it's not. We need to get free. And the Lord has come to set us free. And as we are set free, we will be empowered to help others get free. Seek the Lord. Seek His grace and His face. Because once He has delivered you, then He will be with you to help deliver others. In Jesus' name, Amen.